Yo, what's good? It's Mellow. Today I'm going to be going over the settings I use in DBD. Just a disclaimer before we start the video, these are the settings that I prefer and feel most comfortable with. That doesn't mean you have to use every single one of them. You can just take my advice and tweak them in your own ways however you'd like. So to make this video as efficient as possible, I'm going to break down the settings in five different categories. Sensitivity, Controls, HUD, graphics and filters. I'll leave the timestamps in the video so you can skip to whatever settings you're looking for and if you need them all just keep watching. The first setting we're going to be going over today is sensitivity. I pulled up here my HyperX uh, mouse software so you can see what DPI I play on. DPI is a big factor in finding your sensitivity and what you feel comfortable with because obviously the higher your DPI is if you turn up your mouse sensitivity in game it's going to be really high and vice versa. I play on a DPI of 3200. What the fuck? I know before anyone comments and says, what the fuck, I know. I play on a really high DPI. That's why I put a disclaimer at the beginning. If you guys don't feel comfortable with it, kind of tweak it in your own way. Personally, I like a fast DPI using my PC in general. So when I go into the game, I usually turn it down. So I'll move this over for a second and you'll see this percentage wise goes all the way up to 100. So basically when I turn this down to five, I've almost turned down all the in-game sensitivity and I'm literally just playing with my mouse at that point. It's pretty low in-game, it's not as high as you'd think with 3200 DPI. It's fast enough where I could still spin the killer, but slow enough if you want to be fancy and kind of stylish and do your moonwalks and stuff. So personally, that's the sensitivity that I like to play on. I'll go over the rest of the survivor settings in this category before we move on. So for invert Y axis, you can just turn this off, don't worry about that. For interaction behavior, I keep this on hold just because I don't want to get stuck in an animation. Uh, if you have this on toggle, you might pull yourself into an animation and then end up getting killed because of it. So I just keep that off. And for run to cancel, as a PC player, you're always using shift. So I like to turn this off just in case. You might be healing somebody and holding shift by an accident about to be able to run away and then you'll stop healing somebody at the last second. So I just keep this off so I don't have to worry about these two things at all animation wise. And that's pretty much it for this category. Next, we're going to go over survivor controls. Most of these are going to be the same as yours. WASD for the movement, left shift for running, and for crouching, I like to use the side button on my mouse. I have one in the front and one in the back. Preferably, I like to use the one in the front just because it's close to my thumb. You can just copy the settings I have here. Most of the settings are just preference anyway. I'd say the only one that actually makes a big difference is ability one, and that's for the sole purpose of if you're using dead heart and spinning at the same time to bait the killer for a hit, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to spin and use dead heart at the same time using a key. So I just use the middle mouse button so it doesn't affect my movement. Surely she doesn't know I'm that hot. And for gestures, I use one and two. Moving on, HUD settings. Don't worry about any of these bottom settings. We're just focusing on this juicy guy right here. This scale works exactly how the menu does. So you pull this slider down and everything gets smaller. Pull it up, everything gets bigger. It doesn't really matter at the menu because you actually want to be able to read things. But in game, this is a super underrated setting. By turning this down, it basically makes the icons on the side which show your characters and your perks get smaller. This kind of fits you a lot actually when you're playing killers like Scream because Claudette's icon is literally going to be in Scream's face when he's stalking you. <laughs> nah, but in all seriousness, it just frees up a lot of unnecessary space on your screen and just makes your game look cleaner overall. For graphics, you never actually want to edit these settings in game. The best way to change your graphics is through the DVD files. But Mellow, that's so much work. It's not. I'll show you, it literally takes two minutes. Press your Windows button, go to search, type in percentage, app data, percentage, and then click file. You'll get taken to this file right here, click app data, local, type in dead, that is not dead, type in dead, that is not dead either, type in dead, and the dead by daylight will come up, go to saved, config, Windows no editor, then you're going to scroll down until you see game user settings dot INI, you're going to right click this properties and then make sure this is selected off. This is going to allow you to save the file when you're done. Once you've done that, you can open up the file. Here is where you'll find all the in-depth settings that you can manage that you aren't able to change in game. I'm going to go over the important settings in this file, but if you don't want to hear me yap, you can just pause the video and copy them instead. One thing you should know before we go over the graphic settings is that DVD only supports up to 120 frames per second. Unfortunately for the gamers out there with $5,000 builds and up, Dead by Daylight does not favor your amazing graphics card. A lot of these graphics settings barely even make a difference and just eat up frames for no reason. And I have a pretty good graphics card and could easily run this game in 120 FPS with all these maxed out, but I'd rather just turn off these settings that don't make a difference and just make sure my game is as smooth as possible. For resolution quality, make sure you turn this all the way up. 
view distance, I keep this as high as possible because I want to be able to see as far as I can. Anti-aliasing, honestly, there's mixed opinions about this. Some people say it makes their game look blurry. Other people say it makes like edges and other things look smoother. I personally keep it on, but just as low as possible, just so I don't have to deal with any of that. You can test it out, turn it up as high as you want or as low as you want. You can always come back in here and change things. Um, for shadows, I like to keep it as high as possible as well, just because it still makes your game look realistic. Other people like to turn it off because they like to have like the bright, vibrant type game, which you can already do with reshade, so I just don't even worry about it. I just turn this all the way up, make it look as realistic as possible. Post-processing quality eats your frames. Texture doesn't do anything. Effects doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. And animation qualities... I just turn this on for have them smooth vault animations. If you scroll down a little bit, there's a couple important things you want to change. This V-Sync will cap your frames out. You don't want that to be on there. I mean, Dead by Daylight's already capped out at 120, but you definitely want it to push as many frames as Dead by Daylight will let you. So this will probably be set to true already. So you can just delete that and then type in capital F and false. All these spots where it says resolution size, resolution size, make sure those are all the resolution that you use. So I use 1920 by 1080, so make sure all these three are 1920 by 1080. The last one, the juicy frame rate, make sure that's set to 120. Want to make sure you get all the frames you can out of Dead by Daylight since it won't give you more than 120. And yeah, that's about it for the game user settings. You can go in on your own and just change whatever you want. I went over the most important things, but there's other things in here that are small that you can change, such as like, uh, menu music, main volume, you can change aim assist, um, colorblind intensity, you can change uh, controller sensitivity, killer sensitivity, survivor sensitivity, like you can go over all those things on your own and change whatever you want. Make sure when you're done you click save and then when you exit out of here you want to right click on here, same as you did before just go to properties, turn on read only and then apply. When you do this, it'll make sure all the settings are saved and they're locked. So when you go into Dead by Daylight and say if you by mistake, click a setting. You change your volume or you change your uh, sensitivity down a little bit. But it's already on read only. It will lock those settings. So next time you launch the game, it'll launch whatever's in this already, which are saved. So if you change a setting by an accident, don't worry. When you close the game and reopen it, it'll go back to how you have it in here. Last but not least, we have Reshade. Reshade is a software developed for video games. It basically allows you to add shaders, built-in SMAA, it has film grain, uh, sharpness, saturation, you name it. When you see DVD creators with nice graphics, this is 99% of the time what they're using. Just type in Reshade on Google, it's going to be the first link and it will bring you to this page. Once you get here, click the download button and then it will bring up the setup application. When you get in here, you scroll down, find Dead by Daylight, it's not going to be the anti-cheat launcher. Make sure you click on Dead by Daylight Win 64 Shipping. Once you have Dead by Daylight selected, just hit next. It'll bring you to this page. I don't know what API Dead by Daylight uses, but when I did this, I picked DirectX 10, 11, and 12. Hit next and it's going to bring you to a page. I already have it downloaded, so you're going to have different options than me, but just finish the setup process and you'll be ready to go. Once you have that all set up, every time you open up Dead by Daylight, you'll have a little drop down that appears for a few seconds that tells you to click home to open up your reshade. Click the home button on your keyboard and the reshade will pop up. A couple years ago, a Dead by Daylight creator named Kaido created his own preset that I downloaded and just tweaked myself, as you can do with mine. What's cool about Reshade is you can completely change the look of the game in your own unique ways. You can change Bloom, you can change CA, these are just random cartoon, um, curves. You can just mess around with all these and kind of change the game in whatever way you want possible. Actually, hold up. That looks really nice. Actually, I'm actually going to keep that on. The settings that I use, aside from the new one that I just put on, is Lift Gamma, Technicolor, Vibrance, and Luma. This is what the game looks normally without any filter. And this is what the game looks like with a filter. It just brightens everything up, gives it vibrance, saturation, it's just, it just really brings the game to life, because other than that, it, the game just looks really bland. So I'm going to scroll down and you guys can just pause the video and copy all the settings that you want, or you can tweak them in your own way. When you're done, click Performance Mode, and then click Home again and then you're ready to play. If you guys have any questions or troubles with anything I explained in the video, drop a comment below and I'll be sure to help you with whatever you need. I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.